Hello learners. So today we'll learn what is FinOps. FinOps, also known as financial operations, is the practice of using data and technology to optimize the cost and the uses of cloud resources. Google Cloud Platform offers a wide range of tools and services that can help organizations with their FinOps efforts. In this video, we will discuss some of the key concepts and steps to get started with FinOps on GCP. So, the first step in FinOps is understanding your current cloud spend. Google provides several tools to help you track and analyze your cloud cost, including the cloud billing and cost management console. This console allows you to view your cost by project, service, and uses, and also allows you to set up alerts and budgets to help you stay on top of your cost. Once you have a good understanding of your cloud cost, the next step is to optimize your resource uses. GCP offers several services and features that can help you to do this. GCP allows you to optimize cost by reserving instances. This means you can commit to using a specific amount of resources such as virtual machines or GPUs for a specific period of time, typically one or three years. By reserving instances, you can receive a significant discount on the hourly rate for these resources. It's also possible to set up scheduled reservations where you can schedule instances to be active during your expected usage time and turn off during the non-usage hours. This way you only pay for the instances when they are actually in use. You can also con use committed use discount, which is similar to reservation. But instead of committing to a specific number of instances, you commit to a specific amount of vCPUs and memory, which allows you to use different types of instances over time. Now coming to auto scaling, auto scaling automatically adjusts the number of virtual machines in a managed instance group or a Kubernetes cluster to meet the demands of your workload. When the CPU utilization or the custom metric exceeds the target, the group will automatically scale out by adding more instances. When it drops below the target, the group will automatically scale in by removing instances. You can also use auto scaler of Kubernetes engine, which uses the metrics from Kubernetes to auto scale the nodes in the cluster. Additionally, you can set up auto scaler with schedule scaling, where you can schedule your instances to scale up or down at a specific times. This way you can ensure that you have the instances you need when you need them, but not when you don't. Using auto scaling can help you to reduce the cost by only having the resources you need when you need them. You also ensure that your application is highly available by scaling out when the traffic is high and scaling in when the traffic is low. Now, uh, right sizing. So right sizing the instances, right sizing the instances means is selecting the appropriate instance type for your workload based on the resources it requires, such as CPU, memory, and storage. You can also use instances resizing recommendations. 
which provides suggestions for resizing your instances based on the user's pattern. This can help you to identify instances that are underutilized or overutilized and adjust their size accordingly. By right sizing instances, you can optimize resource uses, reduce cost, and ensure that your workloads are running on the most cost effective inst instances while still meeting the performance and availability requirements. Now, to help you stay within your budget, GCP offers several cost controls that you can implement. Okay. So budgets and alerts. Budgets and alerts allow you to set limits on your spending and receive notifications when you are approaching or exceeding those limits. You can set different uh, types of budgets such as monthly, quarterly, or annual budgets. And also set different threshold percentage for different types of alerts. By using budgets and alerts, you can ensure that your spending is within the limits you set. And you can take actions to reduce cost if you are approaching or exceeding those limits. This can help you to better control your cost and avoid unexpected charges on your billing account. Now coming to cost allocation tax, cost allocation tax are a way to assign metadata to resources such as virtual machines or storage that can be used to track cost and organize spending. Once the tag is created, you can apply it to the resources you want to track. You can also apply multiple tags to a single resource, which can be useful for tracking cost across multiple dimensions. By using cost allocation tags, you can better track and organize your cost and also identify areas where you can reduce expenses. This can help you make your make more informed decisions about your resource uses and spending. Okay, so you just uh, metering so you just metering and quota so you just metering allows you to track the uses of resources such as virtual machines or storage and quotas allow you to set limits on the uses of the, those resources you can set up custom quotas to limit the uses of specific resources that are not covered by the predefined quotas this can be helpful for controlling the uses of specific resources that are more expensive and that have more limited availability. By using uses metering and quotas, you can better track and control the uses of your resources, which can help you to reduce the cost and ensure that resources are used in compliance with your organization's policies. This can help you to make more informed decisions about your resources, uses, and spending. Now, uh, so the next concept is automate and integrate with existing tools. It's a key aspect that involves using GCP APIs and other automation tools to integrate your cloud uses and cost data with your existing systems and tools. This allows you to streamline your FinOps efforts and make more informed decisions. Now, Cloud Billing API, it's a set of RESTful web services that provide programmatic access to the billing information for your ESP projects. With the Cloud Billing API, you can automate tasks such as retrieving billing data, creating and managing budgets, and generating invoices. The Cloud Billing API supports several programming languages, including Java, Python, Ruby, and Node.js. So you can use it with the language of your own choice. 
Additionally, you can use the API with the Google Cloud SDK to interact with the API from the command line. Cloud Billing API also allows you to gain insights into your billing data and take actions to optimize your cost. Now coming to the cost of uh, cloud cost management API. It's a set of uh, another uh, set of restful web services that provides programmatic access to the cost and uses information for your specific GCP project. The cost, the cloud cost management API can be integrated with your existing tools and systems such as billing and cost management software and the custom applications which allow you to automate tasks such as retrieving cost data, creating and managing budgets and generating reports. This can help you better track and manage your cost and also gain insights into your cost data and take action to optimize your cost. It provides various programming languages and is very is easy to use with the Google Cloud SDK. Now next is Cloud Asset Inventory API. The Cloud Asset Inventory API, uh, it provides a programmatic access to metadata about GCP resources such as uh, virtual machines, storage and networks. The Cloud Asset Inventory API can be integrated with your existing tools and systems such as IT asset management software or custom applications. Again, this allows you to automate tasks such as retrieving metadata, creating and managing resource policies and generating reports. This can also help you to better track and manage your resources and also gain insights into your resource inventory and take action to optimize your resources. The API supports various programming languages and it's easy to use with Google Cloud SDK. Okay, so uh, uh, another approach for FinOps on GCP is continuously monitor and optimize. FinOps is not a one-time effort. It's a continuous process of monitoring and optimizing your cost. GCP provides several tools and services to help you continuously monitor and optimize your cost. So with cloud monitoring and cloud logging, you can continuously monitor and optimize your resources by collecting, analyzing and alerting on matrices, traces, and logs. This allows you to identify and address issues before they become critical and keep your resources running efficiently. Also, the services are easy to set up, easy to use, and are integrated with other GCP services. Making it easy to centralize your monitoring and logging data. Cost optimization recommendation. So GCP allows you to continuously monitor and optimize cost by using cost optimization recommendations. These recommendations provide suggestions on how to reduce cost based on your usage pattern and resource configurations. The recommendations are generated by GCP platform and are specific to your environment. Cost optimization recommendations can be used to identify areas where you can reduce cost by making changes to your resource configurations, such as turning off idle resources, such using reserved uh, instances, or using more cost effective machine types. Additionally, you can use the recommendations to identify opportunities 
to optimize your workloads, such as reducing the number of instances running during peak of peak hours. Additionally, you can set up alerts to identify or to notify you when new recommendations are available. So you can take actions as soon as possible. So uh, to summarize, FinOps on GCP is a powerful way to optimize your cloud cost and uses. By understanding your cloud spend, optimizing your resource uses, implementing cost controls, automating and integrating with your existing tools, and continuously monitoring and optimizing. You can ensure that you are getting the most out of your GCP investment. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel to learn more on Google Cloud Platform. Thank you.